like to speak about Forez Elegy. Our theme, the main theme starts on the second bar. And as you see, it comes back three times uh, right at the first part of the elegy. Uh, it comes back again at the end. Uh, so the first time it comes, it's forte. Um, and I like to use fingerings that are more or less simple because we're just stating the subject and that this gives us room to make more interesting colors later on. So. <laughs> comes I like going on the D string uh, notice that we have pianissimo now uh, the slurs are different but I think that it is easier to keep the separate at least the separate um, uh, four eighth notes because they are just in this slow tempo they are hard to sustain after I play the C in bar five shift on the old bow, meaning on the bow of the C. The second statement I like to play on the D string and use a shorter vibrato, narrower vibrato. So. inaudible shift from the C to the um, G here. So really lift your both uh, your left and your right hand and so you can kind of hear a whistle in between those two notes. Um, that's kind of the slow motion version but uh, and as you saw, I also uh, had a little slide to the B flat. So, and that's a very short slide, so it's not. It's just under the B flat. So. string. Uh, this is bar eight. Uh, so for darker color. And uh, if you saw, I was using my pinky on the E flat and just the pinky. So uh, without support. So to give it more um, you know, amplitude, because if you put down the third finger, it's going to be um, limiting your movement. And uh, to create richer sound, you need to have a free finger. So, um, uh, so each finger gets its own um, alone time here. And then, um, so uh, starting bar uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, um, I use more air in my sound, so more bow basically, and a little less sustained. It, it's, um, uh, I, I hear it as a little bit of breathless, so I think naturally it goes forward just a little bit, not too much, but. Um, <laughs> switch from the B on the D string to the A string here in bar um, 13, 12, 11. So, um, on the A string. 
string so that the color change can happen on bar 14. In bar 13, you can relax your B flat, the vibrato on the B flat. So. Um... <laughs> Take maybe a little breath before going on in bar 14. It just, um, like a singer would take a breath. <laughs> Notice I took another up bow, so I start 14 on, a, on an up bow, um, and that's, that helps me, if we calculate our slurs, uh, arrive uh, on that long diminuendo and on the G on a down bow. So the way I calculate my slurs a lot of times is by finding which points I definitely need to be on a down bow and then working my way backwards from those points. And sometimes you have to compensate by, by separating other slurs, but, um, but this is basically the way it works for me um, and a lot of other people. Um, so, uh, so the accent falls on the second beat here, so that helps if you start a bow. on the G and see how you can help with both hands uh, to create it, perhaps slow down your vibrato or amplitude or both. <laughs> so here for the pianissimo in bar 18, uh, you can maybe uh, keep the slurs that are printed uh, with those two connected and then the eighth notes as well. Uh, but this is um, difficult, admittedly. I like to use more, more bow, uh, even for the pianissimo, and you can create the pianissimo by just using more air in your bow and just using the whole bow. Uh, especially if you play this with an orchestra, uh, in a big hall, you will find that you cannot really, uh, I mean, those slurs are really difficult to project with. If you're in a smaller hall, perhaps even a, a room, and you're playing with a pianist, then you have much more uh, latitude with uh, what slurs you're choosing. But when we play in a, the bigger the hall we play in, we just need the, we need the slurs. It's like our breath, it's like a singer's breath. Uh, so limiting it is, is very difficult. Then in bar 23, uh, the piano comes in with the kind of B, se B section. If you look at this piece, it has, if we divide it into three big parts, it's A, B, A, and the B section is now in bar 23, uh, and we are accompanying. So don't forget you're accompanying the pianist, not vice versa here. <laughs> my uh, accompaniment to make it clear, uh, but still keep it in pianissimo. So I don't think it's really sustained. It's I don't like that so much as... Uh, then you create that clarity by uh, hitting the string uh, ever so slightly on each of the notes. Um, from the pianist and here I feel it's a bit more hopeful um, the C is a little less intense than the D flat um, those triplets should have vibrato on each note. They're very expressive. <laughs> 
so give them their full value. Um, in the next couple of bars, um, think of giving a little more time to the top C. Uh. <laughs> Some of these triplets are moving and when we reach 34 I like slowing down um, and then really feel how square those uh, 16th notes are compared to the triplets that came just before. So starting from 33. <laughs> So those are really emphasized in my opinion. Uh, so really stretch those 16th notes uh, to show the difference between the 16th notes and the triplets. In bar 39, when we get to the first subject again, uh, this is the climax of the piece. Uh, very painful and you should be sure that you sustain your sound and use as much bow as, as much bow as you can near the bridge. So I will start from 38. Um. <laughs> Amplitude, uh, fast bow near the bridge. Um, yeah, don't chicken out there. And notice there's three steps here. Uh, bar 42. And then next bar. So the tone, the, the color of, of your playing should change too. It's not the same color. Uh, and then finally... And that was bar 44. And when we get to that low, low C, which is going to be a long pedal point on C, uh, it's uh, a resignation. Uh, it, it is very uh, poignant. Uh, and then the piano plays the coda, starts the coda, and um, we answer him two bars later, or her. <laughs> The anger part of the mourning for the dead, uh, for the beloved, uh, is finished. We are almost spent. We don't have the energy to fight, um, how do you say it, uh, fate, yeah. So we don't have the energy to fight fate. Uh, and it's an acceptance, a little less energy, uh, a lot less energy. So five bars before the end, we go down a fourth from the beginning of our coda. We started on C, and here we are in G. So just that you have a clear, in your head, a clear understanding of those two colors. And then a little darker. Um, and then uh, if you can control your vibrato and play a little slower uh, towards the end, that will really add to that feeling of resignation. Uh, Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.